Welcome back to Physics 11U, tutorial number four, dealing with the manipulation of changing velocity vectors to ultimately find the acceleration. This is scenario number two, as I mentioned in the previous installment. In this case, we're looking at an instantaneous velocity vector that is directed upwards, or what we're going to define as being positive, and later on, the instantaneous velocity vector number two will be down or negative. A convenient scenario for this is something that we're all familiar with, and that's simply just tossing a baseball or any kind of ball up in the air, and uh, that ball will be launched with a certain upwards velocity, as dictated by the force that the person applies, and then the ball will ultimately come to a stop at the top of its flight, uh, and then it will change direction. Sometime later, and we'll give a delta t to this later, sometime later the ball will have a new velocity downward, and in this case it's negative. Of course, we're dealing here with uh, the acceleration due to gravity and the force of gravity. Uh, but specifically, what happens is the ball is being affected by the gravitational force. So let's get started and see what this might look like. Here we have a situation where a baseball is being tossed by hand upwards with some sort of velocity. And the ball then starts to make its way up uh, against the force of gravity. Uh, the gra gravitational force has an acceleration rate of uh, negative 9.8 meters per second per second. We can, for this, round it to 10 meters per second per second. And the ball takes on this trajectory that's known as a parabola. At the top of the flight, the ball's velocity is zero, and this is the point at which at least the ball's uh, downward velocity in the y direction is zero. It still has some degree of uniform or constant velocity in the horizontal or x direction, but in this case we're just interested in the, uh, the y component or the downward component of velocity. At this point, the ball starts to change direction and it still undergoes the uh, change in velocity due to the force of the gravity and the ball begins to accelerate downward. So when we analyze this situation, it's always best to just kind of take hold and analyze it and see what's going on. Um, we have a situation where initially the ball has a velocity, we can call it, uh, for example, v sub naught, that's its initial velocity, and this is where the velocity uh, in the first half of its journey is largest. And as the ball makes its way up through the parabolic path, its velocity uh, constantly decreases at a particular rate, and that's governed by, of course, the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second per second down. So as the object is moving upwards, we can think of it as two things happen here. We can think of it as decelerating upward, because it's losing speed upward. Or we can treat it as being accelerating downward, which of course is exactly what the ball does here. The ball begins to pick up speed. The ball velocity, the ball at the top of the arc <coughs> is zero meters per second down. And as the ball falls, it gets uh, its velocity gets larger and larger with time. So then, now that we know what the scenario looks like, let's apply uh, some vector math and some algebraic math to this. Let's begin by just putting the velocity vectors in play. Here what we have is we have a velocity vector, I'll just move this one slightly down and make it a little bit larger. This velocity vector simply represents the velocity, which we'll call v1, of the ball at some point in its flight. It could be right at the beginning, it could be somewhere up in the upper uh, part of its parabolic trajectory. It doesn't really matter where it is. Uh, and we're going to assign a value to that of, uh, let's say, 14 meters per second. Maybe to make things simple, we'll just say it was launched from the person's hand with a magnitude of 14 meters per second and the direction is up, one positive. Now, later on, sometime later on, the ball is moving downward with a velocity. And in this case, we're going to assign, let's just move this in a little bit more proportion. We're going to assign a velocity to this a little smaller in magnitude. And we're going to call v2 equal to 6 meters per second down. Okay? So the question is, and if we think back to scenario number one, when we had both of our velocity vectors pointing east, I showed you a technique that you could use to change the v1 to a negative v1. And that makes life a little simpler. So let's begin by doing, as we did before, the algebra portion of this. I'm trying to find delta v because ultimately I probably want to find the acceleration uh, over a given period of time. So I need to find my change of velocity. Because what change of velocity is given by u2 minus v1 
And I just look and I see what I have here. And well, first of all, that's pretty much the way you see it before. V2 plus negative V1, these are our equivalent expressions. So what I need to do is I need to take my V1 back there and simply reverse it and keep the same magnitude, but now it's pointing down. So V2 in this case is six meters per second down. And I add to that 14 meters per second. And the negative makes the up down. And now I can very conveniently add my vectors because they're pointing in the same direction. So this gives me a change in velocity of 6 meters per second plus 14 meters per second or 20 meters per second down. What this means, the significance of this, is that over a given period of time, I see that we, we haven't defined it, but we will, over a given period of time, the object's velocity is changed by 20 meters per second in the downward direction. So ultimately, the change of velocity vector must point down. And it makes sense when we think about it, because as the ball is rising up in its parabolic path, there is this force opposing it that's causing the velocity to become less until ultimately at the top of its flight, up here, hits zero, and then the ball begins to accelerate downward. Its velocity is changing in the downward direction. So we end up with 20 meters per second down. Let's uh, get the time here, just arbitrarily choose a time of say 10 seconds, if this happens over 10 seconds, the standard basic formula for acceleration makes the rate of change of velocity. I know my change of velocity is 20 meters per second down. And I know that took 10 seconds to complete. I should actually put it here uh, to be perfectly clear. A is equal to delta B over delta T. This is my sort of what we call topic sentence or opening sentence that you know you need to begin with and then you can uh, substitute in the quantities as they apply. Uh, 20 meters per second divided by 10 seconds gives us a unit of meters per second per second and 20 divided by 2 uh, by 10 is 2 meters per second and the direction down. There, we have now determined the acceleration is two meters per second per second down, or we could think of that as being equivalent to negative two meters per second per second up. In other words, we can think of it as losing two meters per second of speed every second that it moves upward. And then on the other part of the trajectory, from up here down, we can think of it as gaining two meters per second per second in the downward direction. And we'll, we'll show that in a moment with the, with the ball. So let's get back to our, let's get back to the second we're doing this and we're going to look at the actual velocity vectors themselves and we'll do our vector map. So we start off with the vector of the uh, object being thrown up with some initial velocity up. And that uh, value we had previously said was going to be uh, V1 is 14 meters per second. Later on, sometime later on, the velocity is less in magnitude, but now the direction is pointing downward, and V2, we'll just say, is 6 meters per second and 4 percent. So this is a magnitude, and this defines the direction together. This is the vector. So the question is, well, how do we deal with this? Well, we know that we have to add vectors head to tail, and we know that delta V is in fact v2 plus negative v1. Okay, so we have to take our v1 vector and we have to uh, switch it around. So I'll just uh, click the clone that and we'll flip it so that it is flipped smoothly. And now you'll see that we have the vector that's opposing it. This is our negative v1 vector. Put it over here. And we'll call it consistently negative v1. And its value is still 14 meters, uh, sorry, yeah, 14 meters per second. But now it is pointing down. 
Well, the rule in with vectors, you can uh, translate vectors anywhere you want as long as you don't change the direction or angle of the vector and as long as you don't change the vector's magnitude when they get very really smaller. So we just match that up, then we make it to the length. And now I can add my two vectors into jail. Well, in this case then, I have a velocity vector of 6 meters per second, and I have down, and I have a velocity vector of 14 meters per second down, and collectively that's going to give me a delta V vector of delta V is 20 meters per second, and it is pointing down. And in fact, we had 20 meters per second. By doing the math, by doing the vector, we end up, as we should, with the same value. Now we said then that the acceleration of the ball was 2 meters per second every second downward. That is to say, it is losing 2 meters per second of speed as it moves up, and it begins to gain 2 meters per second per second of speed on its way down. So let's go back to the original diagram we had here and let's see how this works out. So we begin. The ball begins with a speed of 14 meters per second upward. Once again that was in our original our original speed, 14 meters per second. And it is losing oops sorry there it is losing two meters per second every second. So let's just define this as being an interval of time of one second. Each snapshot, each photo of the ball represents one second of time. All right, so it's, it's like a series of snapshots uh, one second apart. So after one second, this begins at 14 meters per second. Now this is moving and I, I'll, I'll just assign meters per second as being the unit throughout so I can just write the numbers down as opposed to the number of the unit, but understand that it is meters per second. 14, it's losing 2 meters per second. Uh, per second, it's 12, 10, 8, 6 meters per second. 4 meters per second after 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 seconds. And ultimately, it is going to be losing another... Uh, let's just copy and put one more fish ball in there. We missed one there. Clone that. And we'll just move it in here, and right there, and we'll assign that a value of two, oops, two meters per second, and then at the very top, it will be zero meters per second. Let's try that again, zero meters per second. So at this point now, it's a two meters per second. All this route has been losing two meters per second. Of speed every second. And it took one, two, three, four, five, six, seven seconds to do that. Seven times two is 14, and 14 minus 14 gets me zero meters per second. Now, on the way down, its rate of acceleration can be thought of as positive two meters per second per second down. It begins at zero, one second later, it's now moving at two meters per second. Another second later, it's moving at four meters per second and ultimately at the end of our journey three seconds later it has achieved its velocity of six meters per second in the downward direction. I hope then that this has given you some insight into the manipulation of the delta v vectors and how you can use vector diagrams and how you can use simply mathematics or algebra in this type of form to come up with the change in velocity vector. And ultimately, if you are given a change in time of some value, that you can determine the acceleration acting on that object. Thank you very much, and I look forward to creating further tutorials in the future.